welcome back to the Genus Brewing channel. This week we're going to be discussing all the hardware that you might need to make your DIY kegerator. As we continue our series on building out a home kegerator, which we will show you the full build of in upcoming videos, we are now taking a look at the system parts that you'll need, especially on the liquid side today, to build out your home kegerator. And we're gonna focus a little bit on faucets and the different styles of faucets that you might be using. So grab a homebrew and stay tuned. Today on the Genus Brewing Channel, we are going over all the different parts you will need to build your own home draft system. So we're going to be taking you through the whole process and showing you every part from this to this. What is that that you're holding and why do we need it? So this guy is a 5 pound CO2 tank. This is going to be the most common size for home brewing, um, but this is going to give you the CO2 gas that's for one, going to carbonate your beer, and two, going to push it out to serve it. It's important that we mention that you will be using a lot more CO2 if you are home brewing than if you're just building a draft system for buying commercial beer, because commercial beer comes charged and carbonated. What connects to that? It is a emergency button. <laughs> no, so this is a this is a, a regulator. This is a tap rad regulator. It's commercial grade. We don't carry anything. With the, the economy grade regulators we always try to steer people away from because we've had so many people come back into the shop replacing a gauge or just the entire economy grade regulator always invest in a better regulator because you're going to be investing gas money if you don't money in co2 yeah what you pay for it when it comes to regulators off of a regulator like this you can serve basically one pressure of one style of beer there are multiple body regulators that can do two different pressures for two different beers the more common solution for a home kegerator is actually going to be a manifold out of that into that, and you can turn one line into two. What this is going to allow is for you to serve more than one keg at a time. If you only have one keg, don't worry about this. Depending on whether or not you are a home brewer or someone building out your home bar buying commercial beers, you might see two different styles of keg couplers. So if you're a home brewer, ball lock disconnect is going to be the most common home brewing disconnect. Black is for beverage. Gray is for gas. On the commercial side, Peter's got a little different disconnect. That's right, on the commercial side you're going to see a Sankey style coupler. These come in many different styles. The most common, especially in America, is going to be the D-System coupler. The D-System coupler um, can also be used for home brewers as well. We have a whole video on how to put home brewed beer into Sankey kegs. Check it out here-ish, here -ish, somewhere up there. The gas side will go into this side right here and the liquid side will come out. Now that you have gas to your keg, obviously the beer has to come out. Your line is going to vary depending on the pressure you're serving at and distance it needs to travel. There's a ton of calculations on line balancing and how appropriate to balance your lines. Luckily on the homebrew scale, it's not terribly difficult. Just buy 3 16 line, you know, get between four and eight feet of it and you'll be good basically across all boards. And also make sure your refrigeration is good so that your beer is always constantly cold. Now that your beer has traveled from your pressurized keg into your serving line, it's going to reach the terminal end right before it hits your glass. There are two different ways that you can get from the serving line to an actual faucet. The most common is actually through a shank, because these things you can just run through either a fridge door, the side of a fridge, or you can build a collar on a keyser. Again, all that we'll talk about more comprehensively in our actual build outs of these things. The other way is if you have something like an eight cubic foot mini fridge, without the freezer thing on top that gets in the way, you can use a tower. So let's show you what this is real quick. A tower is gonna look like this. It's gonna be bright, it's gonna be shiny, and what you do with it is you take, um, you drill a hole in the top of some sort of refrigeration unit, and it has lines that Logan is holding and is about to show, Bonk! that run down into the fridge. Those attach to your couplers, whatever they're going to be for the style of keg you are serving off of, and you have faucets that attach right here. Um, I'll link one of these in the description in case you're interested in looking at one of these on Amazon. So we've told you how to get from your keg basically to your faucet. Now let's talk about the different kinds of faucets because this is something that excites us a lot because there's a lot of different kinds and they are super cool. The basic faucet is going to be looks like that guy right there. Um, this is called a picnic tap. 
that's what most people actually start with. When I first got my kegging set up, I didn't even have a refrigerator. I literally had a keg, some CO2, and I wanted to start serving my beer, and so I used the outdoors, it was winter, fortunately, for my chiller, and this is what I started off on. This is also how Peter made his first ice beer. As you evolve with your kegerator, you usually end up trying to upgrade into something that looks a little bit fancier, like this faucet right here. The most common faucet is going to be what's called a rear ceiling faucet. And this is going to be essentially the most economical faucet, but also the faucet that's going to give you the most problems through continued use down the road. They have beer that's going to be left in the front end, and when air gets up into that beer, it crusts over, it dries, and so... It, you get a stuck faucet. We've seen so many people come back because they have bent or broke that brass lever trying to crank their faucet open because it got stuck from the beer getting stuck in the front end. A fairly new solution came with inner taps. So these are essentially the predecessors to, I guess, what you would call the Perlick brand, yeah. um, but at a much better price point. So these guys are only a few dollars more per faucet compared to your regular rear ceiling faucets. Um, these are actually forward ceiling, so they are going to give you a lot less issues down the road. The next upgrade besides a standard forward ceiling faucet is going to be going up to a stainless forward ceiling faucet. So these are a bit more expensive than your standard rear ceiling chrome plated brass faucets. But the nice thing about these is that over time they will still be just as easy to clean and you'll have to clean them with the same frequency as you would um, the first time you get them. Other than longevity and wear over time, another thing to consider from going to brass to stainless would be the type of beers you're serving. If you happen to be serving a lot of sour beers, those are especially corrosive on brass, so that might be another reason for you to step up to the stainless faucet. Really important also to note if you're serving coffee, if you're serving wine, if you're serving kombucha off of your uh, off of your draft system, stainless is almost a necessity at that point. Finally, we're going to have the creme de la creme uh, faucets. These are called flow controls. Flow control faucets are able to adjust the resistance in line from the faucet itself, and so if you haven't taken the time to calculate how long, how thin, uh, or what pressure you need to serve your lines at, this can take care of it right from one end. If you want to go all out with your faucet, flow control, definitely the way to go. They are a bit more expensive, but since, again, with Intertap, the whole price on forward ceiling faucets, just in general, plummeted from the old standard the Perlick had. These used to cost $85 per faucet. This one right here is, what, 50 bucks? Just under 50 yep. bucks? So, huge price drop. Um, we'll link all this down below. So, if you're interested in any of this stuff, check it out. Uh, stay tuned for our next draft system video where we put all this together. Is that, is that next? Or putting it together next? I think so. That's all that's left to do. We just got to put it together. Put it together, balance up the system, and serve some beer. That's right. Please ask us questions if you have any questions on any of this stuff. Or just comment below. Say hi uh, in the comments. Uh, give us a like, subscribe, and stay tuned to Genus Brewing. Just realized, you gotta get a stout faucet. Oh yeah. Has some check balls in it. Check balls. <laughs> check balls. Like <laughs> this. It it's, is. it's a red button. It's a, <laughs> it's a red button. Not so. Not so. So is a filler word. Never use so. Jeez. Look at that. See, I told you you were gonna break something.